Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to our third and final game of A Feast for Odin, the Norwegians, for the day. I am having such a good time. Y'all, I love board games. I just, just really love board games. Uh, there's one thing that I would really like to play on the channel that there isn't a tabletop simulator mod for, but that I do have a physical copy of. So, I might, uh, I might put together a thing uh, in the near future. That Maybe that'll be what we do in two weeks. I don't know. I'm just... Doing this has made it very clear to me that I want to keep doing this in the future. Anyway, let's um, let's get to it. I I double checked, I triple checked our position at the end of the game. It looked legal to me. I think that was a legitimate score. It's just it was such a high number that I <laughs> kind of assumed I must have cheated somewhere. I'm sure somebody will suss it out in the comments if it did indeed happen. Uh, so let's have a look at our new starting position. First of all, uh, much less exciting mountains. These are these are just like terrible, terrible mountains. Uh, we started with the meat curer profession here, which is, I don't know, it's okay. A 1x4 tile is pretty good. Um, to be clear, when you successfully perform the laying a snare action, you do get a snare back as part of the payout, and the appendix clarifies you are allowed to use, you are allowed to spend that snare to get the salt meat. It doesn't have to be a, another one you have on hand. So, this seems fine. Um, obviously, compels you to want to lay a lot of snares, which is a thing we have not been doing, but we probably should be doing. And um, our starting, our artisan shed, is the beekeeper, which just seems not any good at all. Or on the other side, the mason's shed, which is the stone version of the thing we had last game. And I think this is slightly better. Like green beans is a good tile, um, but honestly, these are not. These are not interesting in the way that our last start was interesting. So, I think we're going to have to play the board a little bit harder. Here's something I'm thinking. This space is so incredibly powerful and efficient if you have cows. Then maybe our first, our very first goal this game should be acquiring two cows. Now that's a little bit trickier in single player than it is in multiplayer, because in multiplayer, you could play this space on turn one and on turn two to get your pair of cows. Um, I mean, it's not trivial to acquire three coins on turn one, but it's also not impossible. Um, yeah, maybe we want to try like cows and horses, because like if you have if you have a spare cow and a spare horse, this space is pretty uh, powerful. I turned off the button functionality of the uh, the spaces in the setup for the mod, and unfortunately that also seems to have turned off the reminder text, but at this point probably you guys understand the, um, you understand the iconography well enough to be able to read it, and also we've played more than half of the spaces too. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe we want to try to go for a cows and horses kind of thing here. So what is the absolute earliest we could get a cow? Man. Uh, obviously, three coins, uh, three coins plus grain gets us a breeding pair of cows or horses, but how would we get a grain on the first turn? This might be, it might be the case that the earliest we can do this is turn two, which I guess makes it the same speed as in the, uh, the multiplayer game. Because we'd have to, this is a four-person space. We would have to, with two Vikings, get three coins and a grain in order to be able to do this, which we're not going to be able to do. So yeah, never mind. We won't worry about it. We'll do that on turn two. We'll try. Uh, we'll try a more of an animal-focused strategy here. So let's go ahead and play out the early game. I mean, you know what it is at this point. We get our first harvest. I don't think we're gonna hit 144 again. I think we got we got lucky in a variety of ways last time. All right, got ourselves a spear, not a terrible early pull, although obviously a snare would have been cool. Uh, so we're probably going to get Meat Curer down next turn at the latest, because we're totally going to play a four-person space. So, what's our setup? How do we how do we prepare for having two cows? Is there anything that we really need to do on that front? I suppose. If we're talking about getting more food, we should probably make an earlier effort to get um, access to places to store food for points. Honestly, maybe a longhouse, maybe an early longhouse would be a good idea. We can get some oil income, which is not quite as good as the hide income, but it's still not bad. And then we can pull um, other food from it as well to help fill it. 
Uh, you can get a longhouse in two ways. Uh, one, by doing the thing we did last game, building a a uh, gnar and a longhouse together in a single action, or by simply paying two stone for one. And honestly, I think they're both pretty good, but they're both kind of hard to execute in the early game just because it's so many dudes. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm looking at this, like, being able to get grain from horse. On an action that gives you flax and grain and two coins, and that's pretty cool. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, we'll go for an animal strategy. So how do we want to set it up? We could start trying to accumulate the resources for the house. Part of the way we do that could be by playing the mason's shed and getting a hold of that, um, that stone bonus. It's okay. Uh, or we could just mine. We could just go mining really hard. It's a little awkward. We didn't, we didn't get any early stone mountains. We both have three wood on the front of them, so... We couldn't even, using the, uh... Using this, we still couldn't get four stone together, or two stone together. But, we could play this action. Just take two building materials of your choice from the, uh from the pile and do an upgrade. We could do this to end our first turn and then we could um, we could acquire some more stone. We could acquire one more stone some other way next turn and think about that. We don't need the longhouse right this second necessarily. And that might be a good way to get a gnar. So what else do we do? We have a ton of um, a ton of time here. I'm a big fan of the chest play. Is there any way at all to get to three income on this board on the first turn? That's a question. Realistically, you would probably have to have a snare, uh, like a, a skin here. This one, the fur, sorry. <laughs> skin is a grosser way of thinking of that. Uh, the two by four. And then you'd have to get, like, a chest and some coins. First turn, maybe. If you, if you pulled a snare as your first weapon draw, maybe. You know what we could do? We could just go play laying a snare right now. We could just go play laying a snare right now with the intention of failing. If we happen to roll a 1, like, cool, let's take it, but if we fail it, we get one of the guys back, and we get a wood and a snare, so it's effectively just playing one guy to get wood plus snare, which makes it more likely we'll be able to hit it in the future. Although, again, that's a strategy that's somewhat hindered by the, um, somewhat hindered by the fact that we're playing single player, and we can't try to play laying a snare again on the second turn. Also, just thinking about, like, islands. Didn't one of the islands have horse? Uh, a horse income? Yes, Wexford has horse income. Okay, let's try to get Wexford this game. That'll be an interesting strategy. So we'll just go, like, super deep on, on the high-value animals. Because horses are worth a ton of points. And if you have horses and cows breeding actively, they're just going to be producing a huge number of passive points. Yes, I like this. Okay, so, uh, Isle of Sky flips over into Wexford on turn four. The beginning of turn four. So on turn four, we want to take it and we want to like, just build a ton of stuff on it. We do have to, we have to take all of this space so that we can cover the four and then that as well. It's non-trivial. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll do our best. I'm not going to stress about it too much. So I think we do like the Mason's Shed better. We'll take this as Mason's Shed. Maybe we just try to get that built this turn. So, like, if we go... Woodwood. Build Shed. Get our Mason's Shed out. It is a kind of an awkward shape, huh? We could cover it up with, um... With antlers. We could try an elk hunt at the end of the turn instead of this thing because if we strip two wood off of a mountain right now 
then it's pretty easy for us to get a pair of stone with a normal action next turn. Sorry, once again, gripped by indecision, gripped by the breadth of the possibilities, man. There's so much stuff that we want to do. I kind of like this laying a snare thing. Let's just try to lay a snare. See what happens. Because we're going to want to lay snares in the future. We're going to want to get meat cure firing and... So, uh, sorry, we, we do have to put two guys on the tile at first. Uh, wait, this snares, uh, snares a d8. Okay. Little orange d8. Three we can't do. Two we can't do. That's incredible. <laughs> we rolled three and two and one. Well, do we want to just take it then? Like... That tile's too big for us not to pay one snare for it, right? Yeah. What a goofy thing. Uh, those of you who've been around for a while and who've seen me play games like XCOM and stuff uh, will know that I have a strong affinity for doing things that probably won't work because probably is not, you know, if you never take a 10% shot, you never get to have the feeling of hitting a 10% shot. Uh, so you just try to find opportunities where you can do a low percentage thing uh, that doesn't hurt like that, where failing that would actually have been fine for us. And sometimes you just get way more value than you were expecting to get. Um, that's phenomenal. And now, now we have the question of whether or not we could actually fill this up. So how would we do that? If, if we got a chest going, so let's say we, we pay two guys for the chest thing, which means we got to pay one guy for get wood. You go chest plus coin plus you need two things here. So you have to you'd have to get coin. You have to get two coins with one guy, which you can't do. Or you would have to You would have to upgrade. Hold on. If we spend one guy fishing, we have two spears. We spend one guy fishing, and he gets it. Then he gets a wood. And he gets a he gets an oil rather. Then we have one guy play this. We get one wood and upgrade the oil to a rune stone. Then we do this thing. That actually gives us enough space to push the um, the first turn income up to three, and also gives us a ton of fish to work with. And if we try this and fail, it just yields a spear and a f and a snare, and we want snares anyway. This is another one of those situations where we can go for a low percentage thing, and if it works, it's awesome, and if it doesn't, it's fine. So here we need to roll a 2. And actually, rolling a 2 on a d8 in 3 rolls isn't that unlikely. Okay, a 3. A 7. <laughs> And a two. So we hit it. So we just hit it is all we did. Uh, an oil and two fish. I don't even know if this is the right thing to do. It just feels so cool. I can't not do it. All right. So then we play this action. We take a wood and an upgrade on the oil. And then we play this action, which costs two guys, not one. This did not help me set up at all, my uh, my stone play. But it did do lots of other fun stuff. So we take a chest and a coin, and then we do this. <laughs> right? <laughs> that seems okay. And we just, like, eat fish and flax for the first turn? Need to get another flax next turn, so I'm not too worried about not having one. We could instead do, um... You know what? We should do fish peas mead. Because we're going to get a mead for free. And then next turn we could do fish peas mead again, but just have the mead laid down flat. I like it. So we go to the income phase. We receive three silver coins. 
three. Ah, ah, ah. It turns out we're going to need three silver coins next turn. And we get to feast upon all of these delicious fishes and things. Then in the bonus phase, we receive uh, a mead. Which seems fine. And then uh, mountains. Mountain maintenance. So... It is probably not going to be possible for us to build ship and uh, longhouse this turn. We can get wood, wood, stone, stone. But getting wood, wood, stone, stone does not leave us enough guys to actually build the buildings. And also, we couldn't build the buildings anyway because we won't have enough. Yeah, like that doesn't that doesn't work in any kind of way. But that's fine. We have a different thing going on. A different fun sort of thing going on. So here's seven more meeples, and let's uh, let's totally kill it. We get a harvest, uh, nothing happens during the blue phase, and then we get a card in the red phase. Hey, give me that flax. Okay, and here's a grain. It's a spear! Hooray! Never have enough spears. Okay, so... We have three food and a grain, or three coins and a grain. Feels like we just go straight for this and we play our meat curer off of it, which is totally fine. Yeah, I think that makes sense. The, the only reason we would not do that right away is if we were going to do something else that would get us a card, and we wanted to look at the card first and see if it was better to play. So what are the odds of that? Well, I guess we have to figure out what we're going to do with these guys other than that. Um, probably what we want to do, I want to get a boat. Let me look here. We could play two guys here, go for wood, stone, stone, get two weapon cards, and then play one guy there to get a boat, to get, to get a single boat. And then next turn we could acquire some more wood and, and build the build the longhouse that we're thinking of. And then the turn after. We do still need to get a hold of that island. And you know what would be really nice this turn is if we could get this wood uh, this wood bonus space going. So let's say that we did instead of this. What if we used our three guys to play that? Then we don't get our fishing boat this turn. But we do get to upgrade a couple of... Well, we can't upgrade the red tiles. We need at least one red tile to eat. In fact, we want both of the... We want, we want to do this thing, right? So maybe... I'm trying to be too cute. I mean, I'm pretty cute. There's no two ways about that. Uh, we could... Get mountain. We we can get wood stone from this mountain. Build a fishing boat and also do flax to linen just to have a linen. And actually, if we have a linen, we can place it across the top of this, and then put coin coin in, and we can get that wood income. The problem with that is that it doesn't leave us an easy way. It'll leave us with a... Oh, no, no, it'll, it'll be fine. Because it'll get it'll get us wood stone. And then this wood goes away at the end of the turn. And it'll leave us with the ability to get wood stone right here by playing that action. I think that's what we do. So let's get, like I'm saying here, these. And then uh, do one of those, the classic flax to linen. The thing is, it's just such a good play. So much value. And you get me a whaling boat, right? Or a shed? Hold on. I kind of want to have a whaling boat. Right, we're going to build up spears. Whaling is super efficient. And also a whaling boat can be turned into a longship at some point. Like, yeah, a whaling boat's a good investment in the future. Not that the shed isn't. But 
But with the shed, we could use food to set up not just income, but also more building resources. Because if we took the mason shed, we could go this extra flax right here, plus the plus one remaining coin, the, the coin we're not going to use on the uh, on the home board plus beans yeah we should do that okay we will build a shed instead we'll get our whaling boat sometime soon spend a wood and then readjust that guy so he's on the correct space and these four guys go and get me a pair of animals here's a thing i don't know what animals we want so that well, that's right. I don't have any coins. What am I thinking? Well, it's fine. We don't... We don't desperately need them until after the income phase anyway, because we're... We'll miss out on one coin by not being able to do this pre-income, but it won't affect the ability to get the bonus tiles, so it's fine. Um... Yeah, do I want... It's two of any... Two any animals. Let me just double check here. I'm, I'm sure this does mean just two of any, but let's be, let, let me make sure that it's not supposed to be two different animals. Okay, no, it clarifies in the rules. They can be the same. So getting your, getting your cows together really quickly lets you get up to three cows so that this space is as efficient as possible. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Horses are more points, but we can, uh, we can acquire horses in the future. I'm gonna want all of that milk because milk is just like incredibly efficient you can you can play multiple milks into the same uh, feast without it being a big deal because it's the same size on both sides and a four-man play means we get to play a job which we might actually get to take advantage of next turn depending on how we draw stuff uh yeah so did i i did actually pay for everything okay So, we're moving into income now. Is there something I want to do before... There's not really anything I can do before income, right? Because we don't quite have the right tiles to uh, to get the bonus income from the mason shed. So all we get is three income, which actually is not an amount that I'm super happy with on turn two. It's not bad or anything. It's just not, it's not as uh, exciting as some of the plays we had in the last couple of games. Right here. Cow gets pregnant. And then we move on to the feast, which we've already gotten figured out, and it's actually, like, very, very efficient. Our die rolls on that first turn were so, so helpful. Okay, and then before we move into bonus phase, we do have some stuff that I want to do. First of all, this. Oh, get on there. Okay, and secondly... This. And I don't mind spending a flax this way, uh, because we can't use the flax to linen space again until the next um, the next black meeple turn, which is the turn when we get another flax from harvest. So we will have flax when we are when we are able to use it. We've almost got this covered up and this covered. Like it's not too hard for us to cover three and four here, especially if we hit a snare. So I feel pretty okay about that. Sadly, we do not have one more coin available to make this work as well, but I think the stone is more important at the moment. So, uh, bonuses. We get a mead and a wood and a stone. Not a bad pull. This is driving me crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit a version of this thing that has those straightened out. Because I am insufferable <laughs> as a person. Okay. Mountains. This goes away, these two go away, and new mountain. Uh, on the stat points, okay. Uh, we get back the orange vikings, let's do the thing here. My memory is that um, big animal strategies, pretty good, uh, were pretty good before. Obviously, the uh, with the expansion, the board has been redesigned some, so I think they may have been intentionally trying to curb that. So we'll see if this early cow thing really works out as well as I'm hoping. Alright, no harvest, and we are a little food light. The 
A island gets flipped. Honestly, the backside of the A island is pretty good. The tools are just a lovely, lovely tile. All right, red phase, show me snare. Aw. Well, we're probably not going to be laying a snare successfully this turn. That said, I'm absolutely going to try. Because that's like there's not a lot of ways to guarantee get a snare. We, we may actually not end up ever landing this. But uh, putting one guy in there and failing at it does give us the wood necessary to build the longhouse. So, you know. If we were to roll the one, would I pay our one wood for that tile? I might, because it fits right here. Obviously, we'd have to upgrade it, but it's a really, it's a really good pull. Also, I just put one guy on there again. Like, I know for sure I'm going to fail. Hold on, let me, let me put this up there. If we roll the one, I guess we'll think about it. Okay, eight. Five, and... <laughs> okay. Well... We have to, right? Because of the fact that we have Meat Curer. Like, as part of it, you get a snare, which we then, which we then exchange for that and it makes us food secure yeah that's you miss 100% of the 35% shots you don't take right uh, so we did that <laughs> we we get a snare back but we don't we instead put that snare in here it's important to still take it out of the deck I think though because it changes the probabilities on the deck draw uh, so we trade our snare for a salt meat and then also we get the actual result of the thing, which is a fur. Obviously, we have to upgrade it to place it here, but we can figure that out. So now we need... We have four, we have four guys who could be used to build ship plus longhouse. We would have to get two wood, which is actually not that easy to do with two guys. Okay. We could do this, get a wood and upgrade the fur, and then we could throw one guy at um, hunting, and if he fails, he gets us a wood, and if he, if he succeeds, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would do if he succeeded, but I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, let's go for it. So we have three rolls, a four, a three, and a four. It had to end sometime, right? So when you fail that, you get a wood and a bow. And then... We use... Um, this guy here to get us, uh, which wood do we, I think we want to take this one. Just trying to figure out like, where do we want erosion to take us next? But I think we wanted to get us closer to that. Uh, take that and upgrade this to jewelry. And then actually, we're still not going to be able to do this, this turn. Oh man, and if we build the house this turn, we don't actually get to play a um we don't get to play a card, so maybe it would be more efficient to have that be something we do with the next set of Vikings. Cause we don't actually need the boat right now, and we don't we don't get any benefit from the longhouse this turn either, because we're gonna spend all of our food. So yeah, instead what we want to do with these guys is uh, set up getting a card in our hand, and we actually can just go for filling this out. So how would we do that? We could try to catch fish. There's another situation where... Oh, uh, okay, but we... Oh no, that's right. When you catch fish, you're not allowed to put wood in. 
So we would just have to hit the one. If we failed the one, we would get a snare and a spear back, which is actually okay. And if we hit it, then we would have an oil to use. Oh, an oil wouldn't be useful anyway, actually, because we're gonna um, we're gonna put this here, right? So we can't lay an oil here or here because they're both touching the fur. So actually, what we really need is like a rune stone and a coin. Is that space available to me? It totally is. Okay, let's just play that. We can spend one of our stone because we have stone income. So we'll, we'll be just fine on that. Get a rune stone and a coin. And then... We have three dudes left. We definitely want to draw some cards. This is not horrible. But we also could just play one of the three dude spaces. We also could build that whaling boat now, because we also have wood income, so we'll, we'll be back at the amounts we need. Actually, that seems like a really good idea. We definitely want that whaling boat. Um, spend the wood. It might have been smarter to do those in the opposite order. So I'm just thinking we could have bought a whaling boat and then put three dudes on whaling. Uh, if whaling fails, you get two of the guys back, as well as a uh, a spear and a wood. But if it succeeds, you get all this stuff. And then I guess... Then what? We're already set on, set on food. And we'll be really fine on food for next turn, because we have a harvest coming in. I can't believe we hit that snare. This is incredible. We could have one of these guys take the whaling boat out and um, explore an island, I suppose. We could just grab Limerick. Limerick's pretty good, and it has money on it. Wait, it's not supposed to have money on it. Hold on a second. That's not right. Limerick flipped over this turn and put money on everything else. Yeah, okay. So Limerick's alright, but we don't really want to fill it very quickly, so I wonder if it would be better off... Better to, like, take this, fill it up, and then maybe wait for uh, the Outer Hebrides to flip into, like, Cork. Cork doesn't have income, but it does have some pretty big... Um, some pretty big bonuses. We let Islay flip to Waterford. I don't know. We, we don't have to worry about it right now, is my point. So, I'm just like, I'm not 100% sure what the most efficient move is with the rest of these guys. We could play uh, this space, which right now is beans, beans one coin and one milk. It's not quite as efficient as it could be, but it's still pretty good. We could just try to catch fish. Fish are fine if they work. We could just put the oil right here and cover a bunch of space and get us get us beans every turn for the rest of the game. Or I think I actually am going to just put these two guys on the profession space. Let's just do this. We'll get a coin. We'll get two cards. We'll play um, play one of them. Then we'll play the other one at the beginning of next turn. Shorman. Huh. Get one good of a type that you have three of in your supply, but you can't do it with sheep or cattle. And I'm going to bet, I'll go, I'll go double check, but I'm going to bet there's errata on this that says, yeah, okay, also excludes pigs and horses. Because, of course, they, it shouldn't have said sheep and cattle. It should have said uh, livestock. But when they devel developed the original game, they didn't know they were going to expand it. Uh, so Stormin's interesting. We don't want to play it right this second. Wanderer. Just gives you free stuff. Every time there's no harvest, you get to take two things off a mountain. That seems great. Oh yeah, put that down. We still don't actually want to play this at the beginning of next turn either. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. So... That's it, then. And that, I think, is exactly enough stuff. So right before the income phase, we put a coin here. And a coin here 
and a runestone and jewelry. Pretty good. Uh, so, our income is six this turn. And then we do have the option of putting some of this income into uh, into impressive bonus spaces. We'll deal with that in a second. All right, cow gives birth, and now the uh, the milking space is maximum power. We feast on the food that we have, 100% of the food that we have. And then as we move toward the bonuses, we have to think. We now have some uh, some coins here. I probably want to do this. We have... Okay, wait, maybe not. We have enough money here that we could cap off the stone and the ore. Or we could just cap off the runestone. Or we could cap off the beans and either the stone or the ore. We are one coin short of being able to do all three of the easy ones. That's fine. We don't really need more beans this turn because we're about to harvest beans. That's totally okay. Um... Yeah, I'm not at all certain what the right move is here. We already have one stone income, so a second stone income doesn't feel that important. And runestone's really good. Runestone's just, like, broadly very good. But so, you know what? Ore is the best thing. Ore is so powerful before a lot of the blacksmithing gets done. And then, you know, as blacksmithing starts to run out, it gets less good. But in a single-player game, the blacksmithing never runs out. So then we have three coins left, and the question is, do we still take the stone income, or do we actually just do this and, and let it go? I don't know that we need that stone. We're going to build everything we need stone for. The stone makes runestone tiles not going to be available. I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Alright, so we're going to do that, and then for bonus tiles, we are taking... A stone and some beans off of this one and down here we get a wood and an ore and meat okay uh, mountain stuff happens so you and you go back in the stone bag you and you go back in the wood bag we do now have an exposed to silver maybe something to care about oh that's a good mountain and this turn we are the Black Meeples. So we're at nine here. Uh, okay. Wait, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah, nine is correct. Second there, I was like, how are we already at nine? But that's because counting is how that works. Okay, uh, harvest. We do, in fact, harvest. So we have a flax, we have another grain. We could just go buy horses. That's an option that we have. Oh no, we don't actually have three coins. We'd have to get a coin. But then we could go buy horses. Uh, we don't have three of anything in our supply except for livestock but i think we might just end up playing storm in here because i don't think we're going to do another thing that gets a card well maybe uh blue right blue stuff isle of sky flips over into wexford two coins are distributed to each of the other islands and we go for wexford So bonus phase, uh, bonus phase is after animal breeding. So this horse would not. It couldn't. It isn't the case that we could like get a horse and then this one and have them start breeding right away. All right, let's see about this. So the f one thing we know for sure that we want to do is build the horse or b build the the boats, build the boat and the longhouse. That leaves us with five other Vikings. 
Okay, it's a two uh it's a two guy space to pick this island up. So we have a serious question here about whether we want to try to pick up another profession card by doing a three person space before we do this. Cause it could be three man space, then build the stuff, then go and do an expedition. So I'm looking at the three-man spaces here and trying to figure out what I think makes sense. We could just pick up some cattle. Cattle. Uh, sheep. We could go whaling and see what happens. Maybe we get lucky and we get the good stuff. We get to we get to draw the profession card even if we fail. Actually, that's like definitely what we do, right? Because this space is draw a profession card before you even make the die roll. Hmm. Special tile with the high, current highest sword value is reduced by one in its cost. Now that's interesting. And then we roll here and we have to roll a d12. To be perfectly honest with you, the only way we are taking a success here is if we hit a one, because I am not spending one on this. Alright, roll one is a five, roll two is an eleven, roll three is... <laughs> I swear to you, I just want to make something perfectly clear here. I am not cheating. I do not have a thing <laughs> that makes the third roll always come up correct. It just, it just keeps happening. He can't keep getting away with it, and yet, I'll pay a spear, and we'll uh, go ahead and take some stuff here. Uh, yeah, it's an oil plus... Well, hold on a second. Do I intentionally, do I, do I choose not to? Because you can just choose not to pay. You are allowed to do that. Do I want those two guys back? We got a, a job that I don't feel bad playing. No, that feels like just, just being silly. Yeah, no, we want these tiles. Uh, so it's one of these and one of these. And one of these. Yeah, that's that's quite good. I'm okay with that. Uh, and then we... Send these guys. Nope, sorry, those guys go out last. We send these guys up to this space to play our new profession. And does this change what ship we want? Because I was planning on getting the NAR, which is the ship that you use to trade and buy silver goods because the Nar is the one that's paired with the longhouse on the space but we could take a stone house plus a longship instead now that we have a thing that strongly motivates us to raid The, uh, the longhouse is more total points, and it, it has good sources of food on it, but maybe this is what we do. Maybe we just go for this thing, as we have in the past, because, man, it sure is nice to have a longship. I think we gotta. I think we gotta call an audible here. And we can still use the longship to get the island we want. costs all of these building resources and then we have these two guys still do the thing they were supposed to be doing which is go and get me that island all right wexford we are not going to be able to get that horse bonus this turn are we going to be able to get three income off of this this turn maybe so what are what are my options here as we as we move toward the income step we could well hold on a second first let's let's um talk about food so we have green beans for days we can, we can definitely eat all of the green beans. If we're willing to eat a silver, we can do this. Which I think I'm okay with. 
So we'll eat a silver post income. So as we approach the income step, what is the smart move here? Well, this move feels pretty smart. Right? Spend two money in a thing to get three income. And that eats up a significant portion of the space that we have to fill. Yeah, okay. So our total income is nine. I think I didn't really focus very much this game. We're kind of all over the place, and I'm wondering how much of a price we're going to end up paying for... Uh, for that. So, uh, we put one of these into the feast because we definitely don't want to starve. Animal breeding is occurring. Cow gets pregnant. Feast is occurring. Get all this stuff. And then we're about to move into the bonus phase. So let's talk about what we can get for our, for our bonus phase. Uh, we can potentially get a hide here. We should try to fill this up, right? We should try to make this hide work. And then there's the runestone too, but I, I don't know how feasible the runestone is. Um, actually, this is really awkward because we don't have a lot of different... We don't have a lot of small red food right now. So to, to get this hide, realistically, we're talking about... Putting the oil here and then spending two coins. Three coins. But two of the coins are value neutral. I think I'm fine with that. A hide coming in for free every turn is pretty damn good. And then... We have five coins left. So... That is enough, actually, to get our, um, to get our runestone bonus or our stone bonus if we want them. But the thing is, I value the horse bonus highly enough. I think we gotta kind of like do everything we can to make sure this horse thing happens next turn. And part of that is having some coins on hand to like really force it if it's not working. I think. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think that's... It's probably not gonna be a big deal to just be missing a stone. Yeah. It feels less powerful than last game, right? I think last game we had a really uh, a really lucky opening situation. The fact that our starting profession and our um, artisan shed worked together so very well. Okay, so you guys get back over here. Oh, sorry. We didn't actually take the bonuses or process the... I'm getting out of myself because I'm not playing... Uh... Not just running down the list of things I gotta do. Okay, so we get a hide. We get a stone and a green beans. We get an ore and a mead. And a wood. Yeah, it does feel less powerful. We are also just generating cows all the time, which is like... It's not invisible points, but it's points that you don't feel as much in the same way. Uh, so, we did that. We get erosion. Oh, sorry. This also erodes. Get our guys back, which we already did. Harvest time, or rather, no harvest time. So, the Wanderer lets us take two things off the left side of a mountain. Feels like it ought to be these two things. Man, that's pretty good. That's a, that's a really good occupation, especially if you can get it early. Uh, and then, it is the Sea Flip. Limerick with a bunch of a bunch of coins on it is also potentially interesting. Uh, the red phase, we get a spear, which is not the snare I was hoping for, if I'm being honest. And now here we are. So, uh, pillaging. 
This does not give us plus one value on our pillage. It reduces the cost of the highest costing thing that is left. Which means that in order to take advantage of this, we have to be able to hit a 15. Right? It, it's dropping the cost of the crown to 15. How would we hit 15? We have a spear, or we have a sword and a stone. Expected value on this die is somewhere in the neighborhood of six and a half. Uh, we can assume it'll it, probably we will hit a little bit higher, but like we realistically probably need seven points of assistance. Is my feeling? Uh, we do have two ore. We can put that ore on the longship. In fact, we probably have to have any reasonable chance at this. We could go get a bunch of stone. Alright. We should probably do some of that. I'm going to... Go get some stone. I guess, is this the way we want to do it, though? Also, do I have three of anything? No, I don't. Just trying to figure out if it makes sense to play that, maybe? Because that's not terrible here. It would allow us to turn this into a 3x3 three three blue, which, obviously, is a thing we could, we could do some stuff with. But I'm just thinking, if we could pull off the crown, it fits right around the horse so nicely. It covers so much of the space that we need to cover. We would have to, we would just have to put, like, a, a spices or something down here. Like, it's so doable if we can just make the crown happen. So maybe what we want to do is play this space. We could, we could take three stone. Then we could also draw two weapon cards and hope for a sword in them. A sword or a, a snare, because the snare thing is uncovered and we should probably do it. I think that's actually pretty good. I have this weird panic happening in my stomach. What is this guy doing? Hold on, is he supposed to be down here? This leaves us with 10 guys, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, he is totally supposed to be down here. I must have dropped him or something on the way. Uh, let's do this. I have this um, this terrible feeling in my stomach that I'm like screwing up because we're definitely not going to score. It, does, it doesn't feel like we're going to score as high this game. And I'm just like, it's performance anxiety, right? Like, oh my god, I'm going to screw up playing a board game in front of all these people. It's funny what, <laughs> what your brain gets concerned about some of the time. So we're going to take three things off the mountain. That's that. So we now have an awful lot of raiding power. Go ahead and put the two ore on the longship to make it a uh, make it as powerful as possible. So now we do have seven points of assist on the longship. What we're looking for is an eight or better in three rolls of a d12. Is that good enough, or do we want to do we want to get more push? Because we could play this space, get another ore to put on the longship, and then also pick up two silver kind of like that. Honestly, I think that's pretty good. Let's do that thing. Another ore for our longship, so now we're just digging for a seven. And also we got two silver, which is which is real fine. Alright. Let's raid. Let's um pillage. I can never remember which word is which. Okay. So all we need is a 7 or better, and any any higher than that we get is just saving us stone, which is nice. <sighs> that effectively costs 15. Just double checking my math. Um, our roll is a 10 right now, so we can spend sword and 4 stone. I don't want to do that. I mean, I'm glad we have the option, but I kind of think I'm going to roll again. Here's the thing. Since we know the die always comes up one on the third roll, <laughs> I think we only really have one more shot at this. Ah, am I being greedy? Four stone's a lot to pay. At the same time, the crown's phenomenal. 
Yes. Yeah, being silly. We, we should do it. Now I'm going to do the thing you shouldn't ever do. I'm going to check. I'm going to see what would have happened. We would have rolled a 10. We would not have had to pay anything for it, actually. Any stone. No, we would have had to pay one stone. Ah, well. I was just... The suspense is going to kill me. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, it, do, it does roll a one on the third one. Uh, well, hopefully that that makes it 100% clear to you that I'm not using some kind of cheating device, because if I was, I would never have rolled that again to, <laughs> to reveal the one. Uh, yeah, crown. We done crowned it. Thanks, card. So this is where we're going to put our crown, but we can't put it here yet, because we must first fill in these six spaces. Uh, so we need a chest or some spices or something. A chest plus the hide laid right here would totally work. And we do have a wood that we can make into a chest. Spices would require us to get a, head, get a hold of a skin and bones and then uh, upgrade it somehow. Which is not a thing that we can't do, but it is a thing that I think we probably don't want to bother with. So let's just spend two men doing this thing. Uh, give me that chest and also a coin. Put this like this. And the hide right there. And then the crown right there. And now we just need to spend the rest of our, some more guys getting uh, coverage for the top of this, and we're all good. And that doesn't seem like it'll be too hard. We honestly, we could just, we could fix it with silver. So, what do we want to do with our remaining three dudes? You know what I want one of them to do? I want to milk the cow. Look at this. This is like food for the rest of the game type food here. So we have beans. We have two milks. And we have a silver. Really, could really go for a glass of some milks. So two guys left. We could use these two guys to buy an animal and grain. And then um, we just get a horse now, take a horse from the bonus phase, and then the, the horse doesn't breed this turn, but it'll become pregnant next turn, and then it will produce a new horse on the final turn right as the game is about to end. That's also something that we could just do next turn. Do we have spears? We have two spears? I'm thinking about the, um... Thinking about the... the end of the row here the the fifth column abilities potentially using one of these we could uh retire our whaling boat but i think i might want to use it one more time i don't want to re retire this long boat because I, I we want we, i would like to use the long boat once more it has so much ore on it it feels like it would be a waste not to you know what we should do we should raid so we don't get the benefit of the ore on the boat we just have to roll a six or better if we want to take a thing. But if we fail to get a thing, uh, then we get a sword and a stone, which could potentially be useful in the near future. Hey, look at that. It doesn't always come up one. So we got a six. A six gets us a runestone. Or does it, is there anything here that has a sword value of six? I think a runestone might be the only thing we can get. Um... That's fine. I'll take yeah, I'll take a runestone. That's that's cool. Blue coverage is good to have. And then I guess we're done. No, we're not. So, I guess we're done. We have a guy left, SP. You can tell my brain is starting to get fried already. This is all it took. Just like the calmest thing possible for a couple of hours and there's nothing left in there, man. Um, well, we don't have any building materials. We could get 
a thing, um, but it would be wood. The only thing we can get is wood. And and do an upgrade. I don't know that I love that. Uh, do we we do have a flax. We could make linen. Mm, linen's not bad. Yeah, like linen fits right here really nicely. Gets us that stone income and gets us a long way toward the five. Or we could use it to just cover here and it gets the horse. Let's do that. Let's do flax, flax to linen. The last turn is an orange turn. Is the other thing we could do is we could go for... I don't know, we don't have a gnar, so we can't do theft. We don't have wood, so we can't do this. We could do this thing. We could get building materials. We could go, we could go on an elk hunt with our five thingies. I don't want to spend the spear... Or the, the snare, rather. But that thing is almost as good as a linen, and it doesn't cost us a flax to get it. And we also get a weapon. It's not, honestly, there are places where it's better than a, a linen, right? Like right here. Pretty good. Doesn't get us the five, but it does get us that. Let's do it. So we'd be looking for a four or less. I don't really want to spend the snare. And it draws us a weapon card if we succeed on it. So we just need to roll four or less on a d8 in three rolls. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think we pay two bows instead of two spears. You could, there we go. These form into a pile of cards. So we get an antler and a weapon draw. Oh good, it was a snare. Boy, these antlers are way greener than the other uh, the other green tiles. And now we actually have kind of a difficult decision here. Maybe, maybe we want to do this with it. That's, a, uh, that's the one by three uh, blue tile there instead of the runestone. Obviously, uh, placing it here does not help us get to our higher income, but still might be a very good thing to do. And then, like, we just we just play coins all the way across. This gets us a horse. If we do this, we also get income oh no i have to i have to build over a bunch of other stuff too if i want the income but i do though i do totally want the the income so let's make that happen break one of these into two bits there we go now we can cover that five legally that's get that gets me to six income here and unfortunately there is not any chance of us covering the five on our home board i'm a little worried about our home board Well, we'll figure it out. Income time. The income is... Uh, yeah, it is what it says right now. 12. There's no way we're going to improve it. Then two more. Okay, 12. Animal breeding time. Gets us another cow. Look at this. Look at how we're doing over here. Look at all these points of animals. Uh, and then the feast. I didn't plan for this at all. I just assumed we'd be fine. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not start by putting the grain on the table. Because we got all these beans and all this milk for a reason. There you go. That's how you do that. Two of these are sideways. Here. We'll, uh... There you go. <laughs> That's a legal feast. Uh, and that is... On to bonus time. So hold on, before we do bonus time, obviously. As always, we're going to look at our options here as far as laying down silver that was obtained during income. Uh, we could get a cabbage. We don't really need a cabbage, We but we could get a cabbage. We could get... 
the rune stone, we could get the stone. I think it's probably about time we get the stone. That rune stone would be pretty expensive. But we could do it. Right, we can totally just do this. I think I want to. And then this would be another five coins. It's just a cabbage. I don't think I'm going to do that. Because I think we want um, to be able to do a uh, an emigrate. So we're going to need actual like hard money on hand. Yeah, I think that's okay. All right, so bonuses uh, from here, a hide. Can't hide from me. And also we get a stone and some beans from the, ma the mason's shed. And from here, from Wexford, we get silverware and one entire live horse somehow. And also, um, no, also nothing, that's it. And then from our home board, Wood and stone and ore and mead and runestone. We are, we are at full capacity on that one. Then we lose some uh, some forests from the mountains and we deal a new mountain that looks fine. It's one of those ones you like to see early because it makes stone so easy to get. And then we're back to the top. The last turn of the black meeples. Yeah, I don't know. It's going all right, I guess. Uh, harvest time. We do have a harvest this turn. It's the big one. We gotta remember that we are going to get free, uh, free mining next turn when there isn't a harvest. So we should endeavor to set up a mountain appropriately. The D board flips and passes some money to the other boards. This game, I do not think we are going to have a problem with uh, not having enough spaces to put <laughs> to put tiles on. We don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, we get a weapon card, and then we move forward. Show me snare. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty great for us. So let's um, I guess just go ahead and do the snare thing first. There's no reason no reason to delay on that, and we know we want to do it right. go lay a snare looking for a three or lower yep so we spend two snares we get one back I believe it is the case that they come from the discard pile uh, if there's if there is one available so we get the snare back but then we put it back in the discard pile because we are curing the snare itself into salt meat listen I don't know how food preparation works uh, and then Oh, we do, we do also still get the fur. That's an important one. We don't get to raid again this turn, but we will next turn. We totally will we'll make sure we raid next turn. So what I want to do this turn is just generate space coverage, right? It wouldn't be a bad idea to build a, a longhouse or something because we are really actually... We have way too much food. We're not going to run out of places to put green and blue tiles, but we're already out of places to put yellow and red tiles. Um, we also want to get a horse. That's a thing that does have to happen. So we could get a horse this way. Or we could do this. I mean, each horse is worth six points. It's not a bad idea to go for this if we can make it happen. Uh, we would obviously want to have a resource available for Storeman to increase before we did that and I'm not sure how we're going to or we would want to get another card somehow we could go whaling let's go whaling again we'd like we need fillers so put down on the tile draw a card the whaling assistant during fa uh, bonus phase during which you have at least seven vikings on third column action spaces Cabbage. What? 
Is this English? 161 is the number on that card. Here we go. In the bonus phase, if you have at least seven Vikings on action spaces, get a cabbage. Well, that's not even a good card. Who wants a cabbage? All right, let's roll some dice. Seven. Well, we certainly can't pay for a seven. I think that, like, I kind of want this to end with us failing. Uh, I am not willing to pay wood. We could pay spear plus wood, but I won't do it. You can't make me. Okay. Oh no, we failed at whaling! So we get uh, two guys back and also a spear and a wood. It's a pretty actually efficient space there. I'm not going to say it's a better space if you fail it, but like it's pretty good if you fail it. So now we have the resources for another one of these. We could build ourselves a longhouse and a gnar like I originally intended to. And I think I'm going to. But it'd be cool if we had the resources necessary to uh, take advantage of Storman when that happened. So how could we do that? We have two... Beans. We could get a third bean. That doesn't feel like it's very good. <laughs> but we could certainly do it. It's a shame this space is full. So maybe we couldn't do it. I could play this space to get, uh, to get the extra horse. And that would mean that we have an extra grain. Oh, I could play this space. That gets us a grain. We do have a horse. We need to have... Okay. If we do this to build a Gnar, and we want to emigrate the Gnar this turn, which I think we kind of do, emigrating the Gnar is going to cost us two guys. So this... I guess we could emigrate the Gnar next turn. It's going to be very expensive to emigrate all of our ships next turn, but maybe we do want to do that. The thing is, we just need to have a lot of money on hand for that one. I don't think we can do it. Because we would need to build the ship and then spend these two guys to emigrate the ship, which is going to take all of our money, and then we can't get a horse. And the horse is way more important than emigrating this turn instead of next turn, right? So the horse thing has to happen, and if the horse thing has to happen, we're going to do it this way. We're going to pay three. Which I'm going to put this in and get one back. Pay three to get a grain and a horse. And then... Um, and then we're going to build the thing. This doesn't feel super useful, but we're going to go ahead and play Storman. I'm sure, it's supposed to be like Stormin. Keep saying it like it's some kind of superhero. Alright, so a type of good of which you have exactly three in your supply. Get one of it. Well, it turns out grain. Grain is a type of good of which I have three in my supply. Uh, and then we get a Gnar and a long, long house. Big house. The biggest house ever seen. Okay, this gives us something to do with all of our spare food. Which I think is important at this point. And then these two are somewhat less obviously useful. Do we have... We have an ore. So we could play this action and then have the other one just be like flax to linen? Honestly, it's pretty good. We could do flax to linen and then this action. I have two coins. I guess I, it would only flip over three things. And we don't really need to flip those things over either, I don't think. Huh. Yeah, not really. 
All right, let's do the thing I was planning on doing. Blacks to linen, plus this. So give me that linen. And then also, let's pay an ore and grab something from this board. And I mean, I want it to be the cross, because again, just like maximum coverage. Yeah, it's going to be the cross. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out the way to make that the right thing. Ooh, the sickle's very good, though. Hold on, the sickle's too good. We can't not take the sickle here. Look at that. It fits just, like, 100% perfectly in here. It covers up, uh, it covers up seven points, seven negative points, and also gets us cabbage. Wait, who would want cabbage? Still, it covers up seven points, and it fits really nicely, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. Yes. I do want to do that. Okay. So, we're headed toward income. I think we should be able to get some stuff covered up here. We have quite a few placeable tiles and also a little bit of money to work with. So, let's say this goes here. We can get a runestone there. And then, like, a little bit of money, I guess, to, to fill in the space. We can put a hide here. That's pretty easy to do, so I, the, the only thing we can do here is gold. Or, uh, silver, rather. And then we could place this linen here, with the silverware underneath it covering the hide, and that gets us most of the way to the seven. We can't make the seven happen this turn, but we can do, we can do this. I think this is fine. Okay, uh, we have... So I guess if we're not, hold on, if we're not getting the income, though, we don't even put this down. We just hold it. There's no benefit to putting it down. We want to leave our options as open as possible. And then, yeah, that's it. That's all we can do. So we get a an income of 14, which is fine. It's fine. It's not exciting. There's eight. That gets us to 14. Yeah. Which means that actually probably I want to take a couple of singles here. Okay, and then it is time for animals. So a cow become pregnant, a horse become pregnant. So pregnant are they. And the feast. Didn't have a plan. For the feast. I just kind of assumed that our um, our resources would hold. And lo, they have holded. We don't actually have to use this salt meat. Now remember, we can't really place a second, uh, a second grain. But what we can do is this. Which is fine. It's fine. Um, I'm... The salt meat could potentially be turned over, right? We could we could upgrade that and make something of it. Okay, so let us uh, let us bonus. We have no uncollected bonuses. No, that's not true. We have uncollected bonuses over here. So let's take some of our food over there and see if we can't collect them. Maybe even all. We have the only unspent red food we have is like terrible to use. Uh, well, we could do this plus two coins, and that gets us two value neutral coins to get us a, a green thing. That's definitely worth doing. And then uh, we just played flax to linen, so it won't be available again. So the flax doesn't have any special value anymore, which means that like. This is a perfectly acceptable thing to do with it. And we can take this grain and put it... Ah, uh, we cannot put this grain in here if we put that flax there. Do like this. And then... Maybe actually we use the salt meat in here? The flax there. Salt meat. This grain is just for eating next turn. some of our many many beans in here and then we put a little bit more money into it to to produce some more stuff 
this is a non-value neutral silver. Do I want to pay a silver to get a green bean? We're already going to get one next turn. Oh, I didn't actually pay for my... These are the resources for the houses in the ship, the house of the ship. Do I think a coin? Yeah, probably. And like, if I'm wrong, I'll be wrong by a single point, which is fine. But like, we're going to end up buying, another, we're going to end up wanting to build another longhouse here. Which we can certainly do, and it's a way of getting a, uh, a profession card. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay. Uh, I guess... No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine, SB. Believe in yourself. Alright, so, bonuses. Uh, from here, we get an oil and a green beans and a peas. Yeah, it's not amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that it's awesome. Uh, and then from here, we get that hide... From here, we get more green beans, and also a stone. From here, we get a cabbage. Who would want a cabbage? And a horse, which is awesome. I probably screwed up by not prioritizing this bonus higher. We should have we done everything on our power to get this. The turn it showed up, because I just booted probably six points by not doing that. Uh, and then we also get a silverware. Uh, and from here we get all the building materials and a runestone and a mead. I mean, we have a lot of tiles to work with here on the last turn. So let's work with them. So let's do that thing. A little bit of resource removal. This is the setup I was talking about. We have a, uh, a fine free mountain pull at the beginning of the turn. Uh, the fun mountain shows up last, unfortunately. And we gotta pull these guys. I hope, um, at the very least, that anybody who has watched this, even if you decide that A Feast for Odin is not your kind of thing, I hope this has sold you on the magic of Tabletop Simulator. I should say, and I probably should have said at the beginning of the series, oh, I feel bad now, um... The workshop mods for Tabletop Simulator are free. You do not pay anything to use them. Which means that you can have a very large, effective board game uh, collection for very little money. But if you play a board game uh, on Tabletop Simulator and you like it, you should definitely consider buying it because, you know, uh, the margins in this business are not great. People want to keep making board games, but even more than that, they want to eat and live indoors. So if you'd like them to be able to... Uh, to make board games for you, uh, you have to make sure they can do the other thing. Okay, no harvest, but Wanderer gives us the two leftmost things on one of the mountains. Hey, look at that. That's pretty good. Uh, no blue phase, red phase shows me... I don't even know what I want here. Okay, Spear's fine. Spear's pretty good. Spear was probably the best thing we could have gotten there, actually. So... How are we going to wrap up the game? What else do we want to do? What's, like, pressing? Well, I'll tell you one thing that's pressing, actually, is, um, emigrations. So, we have 13 money right now, and we need 14 money. I should move our feast off. We need 14 money to emigrate all of our ships. And that's a lot of points that we're talking about there. So... It's also a lot of guys. Here, let's do this first. We're going to draw a profession card. We're going to spend two stone to build a log house. Our profession card is arms dealer. 56. What? What is this card doing? So blue cards are at any time and any number of times you can discard two weapon cards to receive an ore. Oh, really? It just so happens we have four weapon cards. Hey, that's a thing I want to play. So let's play it. Uh, hold on. We probably don't want to play it right now. So what I want to do with two of these guys is... Um, plunder. Or pillage, right? So we have a bunch of stone. We have no swords. 
don't actually want to spend. Oh, I had to. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't do the rest of the action, where we spend two stone and get a house for it. That's a pretty important part of that action for me to just skip out on. Okay. So we have a stone, plus three ore. Uh, our raider, our loot hunter, rather, is currently making the... It's making the shield and the anvil uh, 12s. Those are the highest unclaimed sword values. Honestly, that's pretty good. So I'm willing to, I'm willing to spend a stone if it comes right down to it. Let's see if we can roll... Uh, an eight in three rolls. Ah, it was almost a nine. That's a six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Am I willing to spend a single stone for a ten or to just take a nine? Or would I rather roll again and potentially get nothing? I think we should probably just take the ten, take one of the two tens. Um, also, this is a 10. So that's eight spaces. The nine is six. The nine from here is seven. Yeah, the stuff on the, on the board here that there's limited numbers of is uh, always a little bit more valuable. Well, we have a ton of space still to cover. Boy, our score this game is going to be terrible, huh? We have a ton of space still to cover. So much of it, in fact. So we have to just take the biggest item. So yeah, this. Is this the same number of spaces as the other thing? This is nine. Yes, they're both nine. I think this is right. So that does cost us our stone. Right, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I was hoping to get a little bit more value out of our longship before we uh, before we send it out into the west, but I guess that's that. So we we do the big emigrate and the small emigrate. You have to get money. Actually, we need one more coin. All right. So what's the best way to get money? What's the thing that makes the most sense? Actually, a man, uh, ooh. Uh-oh, did I not leave myself a way to get a money? We could turn this ore into a money to play a thing. It doesn't really help us to do that too much, except for the fact that we desperately need a money and that's the only way to get one. Um, It's not the only way to get one. No, but this would be suicide. This is so many negatives. No, we, we do this. Obviously, we do. What am I thinking? Green bean. Milk, milk, and two money. Obviously. Or sorry, and a money. And then we go and we play this space. And emigrate these ships at a cost of seven coin... And then we play this space, playing our arms dealer. Hold on, I'll, I'll put that where it goes in a second here. Or seven coin, all, all of coin. All coin is gone. All coin is delete. This is the future. Uh, all of this ore is delete as well. And then we emigrate the longship and the whaling boat with the other half of that action. That's an okay amount of emigration. It's, it's a fair number of points. Um, and then, with our arms dealer, we're just going to go ahead and cash in four weapon cards. Could you... Hey, weapon cards. You want to maybe, like, form one neat pile for me? All right. We'll just throw them over here. There they go. Uh, that makes two more ore, which we are going to need during placement. And that's it, man. That's the end of the game. This feels like a bad score. Okay, income. Can we make anything happen with our income with the tiles that we have here? 
And we have quite a few tiles, it's just that they're very small ones. I did not do a good job. Sometimes, I don't do a good job. From time to time, it occurs. It's like, the most space-efficient way to use this is to put it here. We have no gold, but, or no, no money, but we do have ore. Okay, so that makes the bottom part of this legal. We're not going to get anywhere near making the, the left side of this legal. Yeah, I just, I, I borked this real bad. Okay, so that being the case, um, I guess this goes just like, like this sort of, I, I mean, it, it should probably be here, because this way it can space stuff off of the hide. We can definitely get that seven covered. Man, the linen's actually like really awkward. Okay. Uh, the linen has to go over here. Because this is the only space where there's four consecutive spots where it cannot be touching anything. And then this the hammer ends up over here spacing things this way. This is just enough room for the hide to nestle in. And then we do that. And that's the best we can do on income. And that leaves us with runestone oil and two, uh, two ore. And the ore really should be placed here. And I mean, this, this could be an oil. Right, it's, that should be an oil. And then it doesn't actually matter from there where the runestone and the ore are placed, because everywhere we can put them, they are the same, the same three points. Uh, this wood is also worth a point. Yeah, okay, so that's income. That's the best we can do on income. It is 7, uh, 16. It is 16 is our final. I guess we don't have to take it. Animal breeding happens, and the pregnant animals give birth. I will say we're killing it on animal points this game. Like, really doing well. Uh, and then we must feast. We must have a final feast. This is not a challenge. The only real question here is what gets used in the longhouse. Because we could do this thing, right? And that obliterates a bunch of spaces. Uh, I guess... In this position, this is only worth three points, which is the same as a cabbage. Imagine being the same as a cabbage. But if we use cabbage in there, we can't use grain. And, like, we probably want this to mostly just be milk and beans. Right? Actually, sorry, we want... Milk, beans, milk, peas, I think. Yeah, that's a... What a meal. Can't you imagine a bunch of hardy Vikings just going to town on some peas and milk? It's called pea soup. It's not soup. It's just peas in cold milk, but they call it pea soup because that's the only way they can get through the day. I'm trying to figure out how we maximize our points here. Is that the best we can do? It covers up eight. What if we... I mean, this is going to be the same anywhere we put They're all going to be the same anywhere we put them. The only question is whether we can jam another tile in. Which I think, uh, maybe not, right? Let's see, if we do that, and then this. And then that, and then that. That's, um, two, four, that's, that's still eight. Still eight, they're all eight. All of the arrangements are eight, unfortunately. 
Can we get eight without using the mead? Because we could put the mead down here instead. Can if I have peas. Milk and fruit? And look, look how much. There's plenty for everybody. Don't be afraid to have seconds. Uh, yeah. I think that's the best arrangement of those, probably. Okay. I think we're actually done now. It was a game. It was certainly a game. Uh, <laughs> so, let's talk about scoring. We have no ship points. We do have some emigration points. Uh, roughly 46 emigration points, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then uh, exploration boards, just 15. Sheds and houses are 34, 51. Uh, this, this first number is going to look really high, but we have way more negatives this game than we did last game, remember. Uh, animals. We have 24 horse points and 15 cow points for a total of 39 animal points. Our occupations are worth a combined value of... Are those all ones? Yes. Okay, so a combined value of six. It's not, like, amazing, but... Silver. We have no loose silver. Our final income is 17. 16. Final income is 16. And we did get the two English crown points. Huzzah. Uh, then, minus points on the home board. Oh, it's just, you know, it's a couple. It's more than one by a bunch. Uh, so let's see here. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's 27. That makes 30. Uh, here's 40, 42, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 47. Minus 47 points. Uh, then it's going to get worse. On the exploration board, we have minus 7. On the sheds and houses, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in that top house. And then 8. 9, 10, 11, 12 in total. No thing penalty, though. Nobody starves around here, as long as they really like milk. And we didn't really have refrigeration then. I said it was cold milk, but it's probably pretty close to room temperature milk. I don't know. I guess the Vikings are from a part of the world where maybe like you would have had access to ice more easily than in some other places. Alright, so I will say this. We had 175 positive points. By a large margin, the largest number of positive points we've had in any of these uh, games. However, minus 47, minus 7, minus 12. You know, that is still actually 109 points. It's not great, but it's still above the quote-unquote good score threshold. Um, yeah, that one got away from me, huh? I had a plan. Here's the thing. Once you get your animal engine going, it is usually beneficial, and I kind of got like fixated and tunnel visioned on a couple of things, but it's usually beneficial to do a little bit of upgrading. Animals are red tiles, and so they upgrade to green tiles, and like we are in a position here where a couple of clothing tiles would actually have been really good. We have a ton of space for them. They actually, they, they completely fill the space we have left. Uh, like a cow or two upgraded. Let's say we got one upgraded twice to here. One upgrade, like, you know, each one of these cows could have gone from being worth three points to being worth 12 points with just a little bit of upgrade magic. And probably it is the case that even without any major uh, sequencing differences, just playing the last turn, focusing on upgrading away some of the animals instead of um, instead of doing the things we did, that, that might have yielded a better play. Because, like, each animal upgrade was worth nine points while flipping the ships over was worth six points each let's see the long ship 15 yeah because because of the fact that we paid seven points worth of silver for each one it was only six points each and we didn't actually save anything on the feast table because we had a ton of food that just went to waste instead so yeah probably some animal upgrades would have would have saved us some points there it would not have been anywhere near enough to get us to 140 anything so not great, but, you know, not the end of the world. Uh, that is going to be it for us for today. That second game was really something. I have a hard, I have a feeling I'm going to have a hard time matching that one. 
Uh, thank you all so much for watching. This has been like really a huge amount of fun. There's going to be more board game stuff in the near future. Uh, that was kind of like kind of the idea when I started doing this every other Friday. We just do one game thing was that I would use it to get more board game stuff on the channel. And then it didn't really work out that way because like three, three times in a row, a big game released on that Friday, which is a little a little tricky. But probably this slot is going to be board games a lot. And actually, I I can't promise anything. My time is not 100% my own. But uh, maybe we'll sneak some other board game videos in here and there. I'll do my best. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, for sticking through all of this. Three videos of this. Um, <laughs> you are the dedicated ones. A comeback next time on Monday for more stuff. Not this stuff, but other stuff. Good stuff. And we'll see you then.